morning, everyone. Good morning, Good morning, Father. I often find myself, when I'm bored, playing chess on my phone, or trying at least. I was never trained formally, I've never taken a class, never been in a club, so I'm not good. But the challenge can sometimes really get to me. You know that one goofy move that makes it feel like uh, you've, you've lost the whole game? It's cost you everything. Your best piece taken out because you didn't take the five seconds to look at what could be. Well, more often than not, when this happens, I just resign. What the kids might call rage quitting. <laughs> Occasionally, though, I keep playing. To my surprise, when this happened actually earlier this week, I ended up winning. I know, it shocked me too. <laughs> Today's readings gather us in to discuss the surprise of response and the dire nature of just calling it quits. These passages resonate with the importance of our response to God's call and how this response can transform our lives. The first reading opens with a captivating image, a feast of rich foods and fine wines prepared by the Lord. It's an image of divine abundance where God invites all people to partake in God's blessings. No death, no sadness, this passage reminds us that God, as the gracious host, extends an invitation to that feast to all of us. It promises hope and refuge. However, our response is crucial. Will we accept the invitation or decline? In our second reading, Paul shares his journey of learning to be content in all circumstances. He speaks of the ability to find contentment in Christ regardless of abundance or lack. This passage teaches us that our response to God's call involves cultivating a content heart, where we rely on Christ's strength to sustain us, not whether or not we win the game or lose. In verse 19, Paul reassures us that God will meet all our needs, echoing the abundance of God's provision as seen in Isaiah, our first reading. Paul's resilient faith is what keeps him in the game. Even when at various points in his, his ministry, he feels that he's lost all his most valuable pieces. Our reading from the Gospel of Matthew today recounts the parable of the royal wedding feast. An invitation is extended to many, but some decline, others respond even more harshly, all preoccupied with their own pursuits. But others respond with joy, eager to participate. This parable symbolizes, again, God's invitation to every one of us, that grace is free. It underscores the significance of our response. Will we, will we be like those that refuse the king's invitation or respond even more harshly? In other words, with God being represented here as the king, will we rage quit? when things don't go the way we like. The common thread in these passages is the call to respond to God's invitation. Our response to God's call is a pivotal moment in our lives. It can shape our destiny, determine our contentment, and secure our place in the heavenly banquet. First, we just have to recognize that God's invitation is an invitation of grace. Grace means something that is free, not earned. It's a love that we are all given. Our, uh, just as in Isaiah's vision of a lavish feast, God's grace is abundant. But it's not enough for the invitation to just be extended. We have to accept it. Our acceptance signifies a willingness to be in a relationship with the one who provides, protects, and loves us unconditionally. Secondly, our response to God's call should mirror the contentment Paul spoke of in Philippians. Regardless of life circumstances, we can find contentment in Christ, trusting that God's provision will always be sufficient. Last, the parable in Matthew teaches us the importance of being alert and ready to respond. When God calls, we must not be too distracted by the world's concerns to hear and, to hear and answer God's summons. 
That doesn't mean we're not going to feel like we've lost connection with God. It just means that in those moments, we'll be willing to try again. <coughs> Let us be like the faithful guests who gladly accept the invitation and come to the feast. Remember at the end, it says the bad and the good. We're all probably in the bad category, right? But God makes us in the good category. God makes us whole with God's grace. Clothed in the righteousness of Christ, we all are made holy. In conclusion, dear friends, the invitation is clear. The call is compelling. God is the gracious host who invites us to partake in God's abundant love and grace. If we avoid rage quitting on our relationship with God, we can truly allow God's abundant grace to bless us. It won't always be easy. Sometimes we'll feel like we've lost all hope because our best peace was taken out. But if we embrace God's abundant <coughs> grace, cultivate content hearts, and eagerly accept God's invitation to the heavenly feast by simply participating in a relationship with God, we will find that in doing so, we not only transform our lives, but become beacons of God's grace for others and transform theirs too. Amen? Amen. Amen.